providing this type of aid specifically to black farmers. Let's bring in RNC Media Surrogate and Executive Director of the National Diversity Coalition for Trump, Bruce Lavelle. Bruce, great to see you. Yeah, happy Wednesday, John. Thanks for having me. All right, so I'm going to play devil's advocate here. And, you know, I read a story, I believe it was on Slate or Mother Jones or one of those uh, mm -hmm. left-leaning websites. And they said, look, you know, white farmers got most of the aid uh, when President Trump and Sonny Perdue, the agricultural commissioner in the last administration, uh, did all that reform. But, you know, that may be the case, but that wasn't based specifically on race. Here you have a situation trying to correct a problem from 240 years ago that's based on a pandemic that only happened last year. You know, you can understand why people would find a fault with this. Yeah. Well, let me just say this, and, I, and I'll speak on behalf of President Trump and Stephen Miller, a good friend of mine. The Trump administration has, from the beginning, has looked at all Americans equally. And, and, and you know, John, I was fortunate to run the largest diversity coalition in a Republican candidate's history, which, which I'm very still active in. And this is just total craziness that the Biden administration is putting color on, on farmers. Listen, last I looked at squash and beets and all types of things, don't <laughs> they have the colors are based on the fruit, but the person planting it and the person cultivating and taking care of it doesn't, doesn't matter. And you know, this gets back to once again, the Biden administration right out the gate has uh, really been doing everything they can to you know, prioritize and to label people based on their color right. and not as the character, as Stephen Miller stated that Dr. King says, yes, yeah, it's, the, it's the content and the character, not the color skin. That is true. And this is crazy. Listen, white farmer, black par farmer, purple farmer, it doesn't matter. You know, they need to get back to doing business and, and looking at the success of the Trump administration that looked at all people, John, equally you know, right. not listen, when that hurricane came through and, and devastated South Georgia, you know, black farmers, white farmers, purple farmers, all types of farmers were affected and aid came to everyone. It wasn't like, well, we got to do preferential treatment on this person, go their color, this color. This is dangerous. I agree with Commissioner uh, Miller. It's not, down a, yeah, it's not a need based thing. And that's, you know, that's uh, really how, you know, Bruce, as a business owner, that that's how you ensure the greatest return on investment, whether it's taxpayer dollars or your investors yeah. dollars, is to do it based on effectiveness. And, and with this administration, as always, form follows function, style follows substance. It's always about yep. how things look and equity as opposed yep. to what actually is going to benefit the American public. One other thing I want to talk about, too, because this, again, is another example of the left's hypocrisy here. We now know more about Patrice Colors and how she likes to spend all those donations she gets from her supporters. Her L.A.-based jail reform group uh, wasn't actually bailing a lot of people out of jail. Maybe that's a good thing here, but we did learn that she spent about $26,000 on a luxury Malibu beach resort. This is according to campaign finance records. The group had meetings in 2019 at the Calamigos Guest Ranch and Beach Club in Malibu, California. Uh, the Reform LA Jails Group also unloaded over $10,000 on meetings and appearances and over $15,000 at a Malibu conference center. Maybe think about uh, that movie from a while. It was a bad movie. Well, not a great movie, but it was, you know, Malibu's most wanted. These, these areas, Bruce, are not known for supporting black businesses. She's not spreading this yeah. money around in African-American communities. Yeah. Well, this gets back to what I've been saying from day one. You know, the, the social media world has been a blessing and a curse, and it's been weaponized to use and play on sympathy and, and oh, look at these four folk, these poor folks over here. We, you know, and they're monetizing these, these particular noise out here uh, to, uh, for personal gain. And it's sad, uh, John, because it does a disservice. Listen, if, for all viewers watching, the best antidote for you as a person in your community, support your local faith-based community, whether you're Christian, Jewish, Muslim, what have you. Mm -hmm. Heck, if you don't believe, support your community, take care of your neighbor, take care of your family, put your money and your resources and your small businesses, like me and, many, and 30 million of us, and let us govern ourselves accordingly. Anytime you monetize these types of groups, you see what happens. But here's the part, the sad part, John. It minimizes and it, and it desensitizes people to like really put money into really good right. uh, organizations right, out there true. that are legitimate, John. And you know, Bruce, if I was staying in a $600 a night hotel room and I was focused on criminal justice reform, I would be thinking about how lucky I was. And that really maybe motivate me yeah. to help some of these folks who should not be locked up. We know President Trump worked on that and actually got some people yeah. out. I don't know about Patrice Colors, uh, but she does seem yeah. to be having some fun on these vacations.
Bruce. Well, well there'll be I'm more. Sorry. Stay tuned, John. These There's were conferences. Doing this. These were conferences, yeah, not vacations. I want to make sure I have it accurate. Yeah. Bruce, great to see you. Thanks so much. We yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Coming up, new CDC guidelines say fully vaccinated Americans don't need to wear masks outside. So why did President Biden ignore 